Hi and welcome sa channel. Today, ipipresent ko yung benchmark result ng two GT730s versus GT1030. And why I think you shouldn't buy any of the GT730 sa market. For the test bench, the processor is a Ryzen 3 3100 on a B450 Iorus M motherboard with 16 gigabytes. 3200 MHz dual channel RAM. So let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. On 1080p with lowest preset, GT730s were unplayable in this resolution. But the GT1030 was still playable at 28 FPS. So GT1030 was more than 100% better than the GT730 GDDR5. While the GT730 GDDR5 is around 50% better than the DDR3 version. For Forza Horizon 4 on 1080p lowest settings, GT1030 had 47 FPS and GT730 GDDR5 had 13 FPS. This makes GT1030 more than 200% better than the GT730 GDDR5. While GT730 GDDR5 is around 50% better than the DDR3 version. For FF14 benchmark on 1080p standard laptop preset, which is basically the lowest preset, no? GT1030 had 56 FPS, while GT730 GDDR5 had 27 FPS. Again, GT1030 is 100% better in this game than the GT730 GDDR5. While the GDDR5 version of GT730 is more than 150% better than the DDR3 version. I also tried to benchmark the game on 720p and GT730 GDDR5 became playable at 48 FPS while the DDR3 version is still not playable at 20 FPS. In this game, GT730 GDDR5 is still 150% better than its DDR3 counterpart. For CSGO on 1080p medium settings, GT1030 had 129 FPS while GT730 GDDR5 had 61 FPS. This makes the GT1030 100% better than the GT730 GDDR5 edition. Also, the GDDR5 edition of GT730 is again 100% better comparing to the DDDR3 counterpart. For reference, I also have my benchmarks here in this chart for auto high settings. For League of Legends on 1080p very high settings, this is playable in GT1030 even with the DDR3 version at around 60 FPS. However, it is worth noting that GT730 GDDR5 is 100% better than the DDR3 version while the GT1030 is 194 FPS. Also note that GT1030 in this case is still CPU bottleneck. So in short, uh, we can still extract more performance in this card if we have a stronger processor. For Valorant on 1080p medium settings, GT1030 had 150 FPS while the GT730 GDDR5 had 54 FPS. This makes GT1030 almost 200% better than the GT730 GDDR5 version. However, the GT730 GDDR5 is 63% better than the DDR3 version. For Dota 2 on 1080p fastest settings, GT1030 had 162 FPS while GT730 GDDR5 had 53 FPS. This makes GT1030 more than 300% better than the GT730 GDDR5. The GT730 GDDR5 is also almost 100% better comparing to the DDR3 version. For reference, I also have my benchmarks in the best looking settings in this chart. For Civilization 6 or Civ 6 kung tawagin, on 1080p maximum performance settings, GT730 GDDR5 was playable at 33 FPS. However, GT1030 had 81 FPS which makes it 245% better than the GT730 GDDR5 version. GT730 GDDR5 is also 43% better than the DDR3 version. For Genshin Impact on 1080p borderless low settings, GT1030 had 60 FPS while GT730 GDDR5 had 27 FPS and GT730 DDR3 had 14 FPS. For Fortnite on 1080p medium settings, GT1030 had 161 FPS while GT730 GDDR5 had 70 FPS. This makes GT1030 more than 200% better than the GT730 GDDR5. The GT730 GDDR5 however is 40% better than the DDR3 version. For reference, I also have my benchmarks in low settings in this chart. Also note that this 
came is CPU bottleneck for GT1030. Meaning, if I put in a better processor, it could lead to more performance, more FPS. Or if you want to maximize the GT1030, you could set it to a higher settings and it would still be playable. For conclusion, as for the GT730 DDR3, this GPU should really be used just for display output and nothing else as it really struggles while gaming. However, if you are okay with Fortnite and LOL for the next two to three years, for example, then this is a consideration. But overall, I would still say that this GPU should only be worth or should only be priced at 1,000 pesos only, not 3,000 pesos, even in our current overpriced GPU market situation. This is based on performance that I have just shown you. No? So it's just roughly 25% of the performance performance of the GT1030 GDDR5. For the GT730 GDDR5, I would say that if you are going to play esports titles on 720p or light games and the budget is extremely tight, then this is a consideration. It can also play those light ported games such as Alliance Alive and probably some games ported from Switch will work. Other light games such as Stardew Valley and Minecraft without ray tracing would also likely work as well. However, this is still very expensive at 3.5k pesos. So looking at its performance versus GT1030 in this market, this should only cost you at most 2.5k pesos. No? So otherwise, feeling ko malaki yung lugi mo if bibilin mo to at 3.5k pesos. Lastly, the overwhelming winner in these comparisons is the GT1030. At 4.7k pesos, you would get at least twice the performance of a GT730 GDDR5 which costs 3.6 pesos. No? So that's around 100% perf increase for 30% more money. However, I understand na not everyone has that budget for GT1030 and that's fine. So if you want to maximize GT730, play at low resolutions. No? So don't dream of playing AAA titles as well. Be content on with what you have and of course, enjoy gaming. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something in this video. Comment on what you think. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!